Welcome to Silver Sea Review. This podcast is going to have an introduction, a movie review, a movie recommendation, jokes and quotes, and then inside the introvert. So all the times for each section will be down below. If you want to skip to a certain section or just watch certain ones, feel free to do so. And uh, hopefully you can hear the babbling brook behind me. I'm as close to it as I can be. And if you're just listening, you won't quite know, but I'm in my kayak again. I'm going to do three videos in a row in my kayak, so woohoo! I got my first YouTube comment the other day, and it was actually someone who was more intelligent than me and agreed with me, and uh, it was a really good comment that uh, explained what I was talking about in the video, or agreed with it, so it's awesome. The uh, focus on my last video, I don't know what was going on. Uh, it was like in the daylight, I go out of focus, and then in the shadows, I was in focus. So I don't know if my camera was on autofocus. Um, for some reason, if I put it on, um, if I put it on autofocus on my uh, camera part, like the pictures, it puts it on autofocus on my video, and I forget to change it sometimes. And vice versa, when I put it on manual focus for my video, I go take a picture, and it's on manual focus. So now I'm having to change it back and forth. So, I don't know. I, I, I for sure have it on manual focus this time, so if it still does that, I don't know how to fix it. It was very weird how it was going in and out of focus. But, I uh, don't have a whole lot for the introduction. Uh, one movie I watched recently that is actually in my collection is Storks. And, um, it's, I'm giving it a 6 out of 10, and it's only in my collection, I think, because it's an animated movie. If it wasn't, it probably wouldn't be in my collection. Uh, a lot of times I put animated ones in there that I'm not a huge fan of, but I still, for some reason, can watch bad animation more than I can bad movies. Look at this uh, old wall here. If I can spin around. Hopefully you can see it behind me. I feel like the camera's tilted a little bit. My video might be tilted a little bit. Anyways, we're going to go into the movie review now. This one's going to be Deadpool 2. I'm giving this one a 10 out of 10. <clears throat> there will be spoilers. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, there's definitely things I can spoil in this one, so if you've not seen it, you may want to go watch it beforehand. And uh, this movie definitely starts off with an incredible action montage, and uh, I mean, it's hilarious, just like Deadpool should be, but it's still action and killing people, and... It's uh, it's really good. Starts off really well. I'm gonna be very bright for the rest of the video now. Hopefully my camera compensates for that. Um, definitely shots fired at religion, saying that Deadpool made. Uh, I think it said it made more than Passion of the Christ, like internationally, and barely didn't beat it locally or something like that in the United States. But I thought that was kind of funny. Um, definitely a legitimate sad moment whenever she gets shot and she dies, his girlfriend. Um, for a, what I would consider definitely a comedy movie, uh, that was actually legitimately sad and had emotion. Um, the 007 scenes and, uh, like titles and stuff and how none of them really told anyone's name, I thought that was pretty funny. It went on for quite a while and it was actually, it was a little later in the movie than I would have preferred, but... Other than that, it was really good. Um, I like the uh, quote, you can't live until you die a little. And uh, that kind of goes back to the other quotes, like you can't appreciate something until you've suffered, or you appreciate something more after you've suffered. So that was really good. Um, <clears throat> I loved how every single person had to remind him that he was an X-Men trainee. And I think even towards the end of the movie, he goes back to that, and they still reference that he's a trainee. Um, so when they put the collar on him, and, I mean, we know that he's, the only way he's able to stay alive is because of his power, I wonder if he would actually die if it was on him for a long enough time, and how long that would take. Because without his powers, he's constantly dying, so I was kind of curious about that. We never find out, but that was something I was curious about. Um, oh, <laughs> people in the, uh, I actually saw this one in theaters, and people in the theater 
were freaking out whenever he got knocked off, or when he jumped off the railing to grab the guy and uh, landed like he did. It was really weird. People were all like, ah! <laughs> I can't tell if this is shallow. Yeah, it is. But I'm, I'm good. I know there's not much behind me. I'm gonna spin around here and try to get some rock formations going. Uh, he kind of fights like Mr. Fantastic, the rubber man. How <laughs> he's just letting everything get broken and then, boy, that's a loud bird. Letting everything get broken and then using that to wrap his body around people. I thought that was kind of a interesting way for him to fight when he doesn't, when he's not using weapons. It's a very loud bird. I wonder if there's any bird watchers out there. Tell me what kind that is. Is that a cardinal? I don't know. Um, I liked him referencing dubstep and then immediately playing it. Wow, that's really sad. And, uh, I mean, they reference dubstep and play the music multiple times in the movie, and that was awesome. Yeah. Oh, when he gets knocked out of the prison and he's falling down the slope and hits his head on the rock. Again, people screamed and it was very odd. <laughs> I don't see very many movies in theaters. This is weird. I guess you probably wouldn't be able to see that. Water is like bubbling up right here. I forget that you guys can't actually see the water no matter. Unless I was like way past it. <clears throat> um, the X-Force team that he creates was very short-lived. I mean, <clears throat> I enjoyed watching them all get killed, but they sure didn't last very long. And I wonder if I put it in here. Oh, yeah. The uh, Vanisher being Brad Pitt was pretty funny. Like, as soon as... He, I mean, you only see it for a split second. And I was like, it looked like Brad Pitt. I was like, but, I don't know, that's something they would probably do, is get a big name star and only put him in the movie for like, maybe three seconds. And sure enough, it was him. I read online that they wanted, <clears throat> they wanted Brad, because I had to look it up, they wanted Brad Pitt to be um, Cable, and he, I guess, had scheduling issues, so he couldn't do that, but he was at least the Vanisher. <laughs> um, the 18-wheeler, when they're driving it, and they're going through buildings. It was really weird because it was making like an 18-wheeler honk. And it wasn't, like I'm calling it an 18-wheeler, but it wasn't an actual 18-wheeler. It was the uh, truck that they were transporting the cells in. But I thought that was kind of weird that it was making that sound. I didn't know if it was, if they were doing it as a joke. Because it was only when it was going through the buildings. Or if it was, they were just trying to make it seem like an actual truck smashing through buildings. The, uh... It was pretty neat how Cable was connected to Deadpool, like they both had the kind of the same backstory of they don't care about anyone except for like a few people and then those people end up getting hurt because of the profession that they're in, I guess, or because they're the people they have to deal with. And uh, it's kind of an interesting dynamic that I guess most heroes end up encountering, even though Deadpool's an anti-hero. I wonder if Cable would be considered an anti-hero. He probably would be too. <clears throat> the baby leg scene was very hilarious and uh, went on for a long time, but it was very funny. And even the part where he shows his little dick, that was kind of creepy, but it was all pretty funny. <clears throat> there were so many references in this movie to other movies, and I mean, even when it starts off, it shows the ending to... Uh, Wolverine being dead and everything and completely references it and I mean this is like Ready Player One I could spend the entire podcast just talking about references but they were all spot on and very funny and everything like that <clears throat> the, uh, there was the Wilhelm scream in this movie and I'm very glad that they decided to put that in and I really like when a movie oh man there's a boat and they're fishing. You're gonna get to see a boat up close. They weren't here when we came this direction earlier. Anyways, um, I really like when they keep all the catchphrases and like if it's a hero that they say all their stuff. Um, 
That was like, uh, what was the movie? Man, I'm blanking out. Hmm. Gone completely blank. It was the one where they put all the big name actors like Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Sylvester Stallone and all of them and Expendables. <clears throat> the first movie they made, The Expendables, <clears throat> I didn't like it. Um, they just assumed that they could put all these big people into a movie and it would just magically be good. <clears throat> but in the second movie, they actually played on the strength of these people, so they had them say their catchphrases and kind of be who they are from these other movies. And that's how this was. They, like he says, he talks about the chimichangas and he um, uh, says his maximum effort catchphrase, which I don't know if that's true to the comics because I'm not a comic person, but I definitely really like that catchphrase because, I mean, it's... <clears throat> kind of the way I am, like, ah, I'm going to have to give maximum effort for this one. So, I thought that was pretty good. But, uh, I really liked Domino's power. Uh, her being lucky was very interesting. Um, you wouldn't think it was much of a power of any sort, but it definitely works very well for her and for everyone else. And it kind of, it's like, I wonder if she could actually be killed or how what kind of power could counter hers because it seemed like every single time something would happen it would be in her favor so I don't know and even then though they did a very good job of for someone having a power like that to um, still like you thought she was close to being killed several times and then something else would happen and she managed to barely escape it so they did a really good job of not making her seem really strong even though in theory she is extremely strong being able to do something like that and uh, her, uh, her power would be really compared to uh, Final Destination, which I love those movies. But, I mean, that's how everyone that she fights dies in, like, a Final Destination way. Like, it's super rare that something like that would happen. <clears throat> Probably see the boat. <clears throat> the uh, Sun Will Come Out song, that was really funny. And I loved how it was just completely silent except for the song and it's like in the middle of fighting and why do I not have my skeg down? Reef. There. Life made easy. Maximum effort. Uh, so many people, I talked about this a couple times already, I kept wanting to say this and I was trying to hold off until I got to my bullet point, but so many people throughout the movie theater reacted to his injuries like they were watching a YouTube video of someone actually being injured that way and it was like, do you guys not understand this is a movie? I mean, I'm naturally a silent person, so, like, I will, I laugh, but even then, unless I'm, like, by myself or with just a few people, it's gonna be quiet, like, I'm not one of those people that, and I feel like it actually kind of annoys me when people are overly loud, um, I mean, I feel like they, <clears throat> sometimes when people laugh, it's like, you don't have to laugh that loud, it's not that funny, but, anyways, uh, so I definitely to these re whenever he hits stuff, but I mean, even in other action movies and like Saw and stuff, I mean, I'd love to see this audience go to a movie like Saw in theaters where people are getting their arms cut off, because I mean, they don't have the powers, like that's actually trying to make it seem realistic, whereas Deadpool is going to heal back, so I don't know why in the world, but it never failed every single time, especially the person sitting beside me was like, oh, 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 I was like, what? this is a movie, why are you having that reaction? I was not a big fan of them going, I don't know what that was, I was not a big fan of them going back to save him, uh, they could have just taken the collar off, I mean, they had to take the collar off anyways, and even after they go back and save him, they still have to take the collar off, which they do, because of the domino of her luck, and I mean, I don't know, I just feel like, like, I can understand like, I understand him putting the collar on and sacrificing himself, but, although I feel like they probably could have found a different way to do that, <clears throat> but having to waste his one go-back-in-time thing just kind of seems silly. I'm going to have to change boards as I lose my paddle in the process. All right, so I was definitely, um, I was a 9 out of 10 on this movie uh, throughout the most of the movie. But once they finally got to the after credit scenes, which technically I would consider the actual ending to the movie, uh, that's what bumped me up to a 10 out of 10, because they 
uh, had a lot of good jokes in the ending, and uh, I, I thought it was a better ending than just the ending to the movie. And uh, I was really glad that Wolverine was in it, which I don't really know. I could probably look it up. I don't know if it was actually him, like if they used him and filmed that scene, or if they just used a shot from the X-Men movie and just added it, because I mean, I'm sure it'd be easy to do stuff like that, so I'm not sure if it was actually him. Now I did, <clears throat> did I miss, I think I missed, hang on just a second, huh, where in the world? Okay, well, whoops. <clears throat> the, uh, all the X-Men are in this movie from X, I don't know, whatever the Apocalypse or something, whatever the most recent X-Men movie was. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure I have a bullet board on there, but it's, can't seem to find it. Anyways, I thought that was really cool, and uh, I actually looked it up to see if it was them, and or if they just, like, filmed a scene or used a scene from the other movie, because, I mean... They just kind of closed the door, and it wouldn't surprise me if they had actually done that in one of the other movies. But no, it said it was actually filmed in the movie, so it makes me wonder if it actually was um, Wolverine or not in the ending. But I don't know. I didn't look it up, so I have no clue. But no, it, um, uh, like I said, I like the ending. It was kind of, it's weird. I glanced around online, and it looks like the X-Force movie is going to come out before Deadpool 3. So I guess we'll kind of see if his girlfriend's alive, but it's kind of weird how he goes back and saves her. And also, now that that device is fixed, it's going to be weird that Cable's choosing to stay there instead of go back. If he's, I'm sure he'll be in the X-Force as well. I mean, it, it made sense a little bit, although Deadpool comments several times that it's lazy writing, but it kind of made sense that he was willing to save Deadpool and uh, that's why he decided not to go back but now that it's fixed he has no reason to stay there besides just being an X-Force member so I don't know that'll be kind of interesting to see because I mean <clears throat> he corrected a lot of things in the uh, uh, after credit scene so it's kind of kind of like a cliffhanger I guess but the good kind of cliffhanger because it doesn't really matter but nope that's going to be it for Deadpool 2, uh, 10 out of 10. <clears throat> We're going to go on to, it's a borderline low 10 out of 10. Like, it's still, it's close to 9 out of 10, but like I said, the ending credits pulled it up, so but it's still pretty low. But anyways, we're going to go on to the uh, recommendation. This one's going to be CJ7. It's from 2008. Shade. And uh, this is a great movie. It's funny. It's meaningful. It's a, a sci-fi movie. It's subtitled, and or at least the one I watched was subtitled. I highly doubt they dubbed it, but I guess it's possible. And uh, it talks about a single father works tirelessly to earn enough money to keep his son enrolled in a private school, hoping that education will lead to better career options. Due to his threadbare clothing, the son is an outcast at school. The father finds a glowing ball in a junkyard and gives it to his son since he was unable to afford the toy that his son wanted. The ball becomes an alien and it becomes his best friend. And um, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's uh, it just goes on the adventures that the kid has with this little alien. And it has, um, I can't remember if it's telekinetic powers or... It's got some sort of power that it's kind of one of those things that's used in a lot of movies where they, uh, while they're trying to make friends with it it's also causing havoc by using its powers but it's a really good movie so go check it out oh crap i don't have my phone at all hmm i could get it I'll try to get it while i'm talking about these this will be interesting um so jokes and quotes uh even the darkest night will end and the sun will rise and that one's good because it talks about it doesn't matter how bad of a situation you're in you'll never be in it forever so I mean, let's reference it again. Never stop fighting. Uh, I've said that a million times. Sorry, there's a reflection on my camera. I thought there was a drop of water somehow on there. Um, 
I've referenced that never a million times, never stop fighting, so that's the same thing. I mean, as long as you never give up, something will change, and you'd be surprised that it could just happen tomorrow. It could happen in a week or in a year. It may take a long time, but nothing stays the same forever, and that sometimes is a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing, but <clears throat> just keep going. The next quote, a wise person knows that there's something to be learned from everyone, and I've kind of mentioned this before. Um... If you stay close-minded, like if you don't listen to someone just because they have vastly different views than you, I'm not a big fan of that because even if you hate everything about a person and disagree with everything, they can still say something that can have good wisdom behind it or that could make you think of different ideas and not necessarily change your mind, but just see things from a different angle. And uh, so... It's good to always remain open-minded, and, I mean, even if you're, like, for example, religion. Even if you're not religious, I mean, there's still a lot of wisdom in the Bible, and uh, other books, the Quran, the Book of Mormon, I mean, there's phrases and stuff, so if you just completely close all that off, and uh, almost to the point of hatred of it, then you're not going to benefit from it, and... <sighs> That's going to be it. The uh, jokes. As I unlock my phone, which I should have done while I was talking. Because now it takes a minute. And I can't say it, because as soon as I say it, I won't have it ready. Yay, awkward. Why does this take so long? All right. A jumper cable walked jumper cable walked into a bar. The bartender said, "You can stay, but don't start anything." It's very loud. Um, Humpty Dumpty had a terrible summer, but he had a great fall. All right. Glad that's over with. All right. Inside the introvert section. Um. So, I was reading something the other day and. I'm just going to read this off the paper. It says, Seek quality over quantity. Balance time alone with time shared. Honor your unique needs and everything will be fine. Well, most of the time. Sometimes it will be awkward, but that's okay too. And uh, I just thought that was a really good phrase. It was probably from the uh, introvert. Yeah, it is from the newsletter I was talking about, uh, Introvert Dear. But uh, I thought that was really neat and uh, a good way for introverts to pursue life. And uh, one of the stories this weekend, this weekend, last weekend, um, I was playing Pokemon Go, and if you're not familiar with the app, it's a uh, it's GPS based where you catch little creatures and you have to be in certain areas. And this was a big event going on, so I was at our university walking around, and I mean there was probably about 60 people there walking, and I actually. I met up with a lot of people I know that play the game, and one of the people from work uh, actually came by, and he's an extrovert, and so he was talking to anyone that was passing us and keeping up with people and everything like that. And there was this one younger kid that actually was walking with us at one point, and he was talking to him, and when my friend from work finally took off, the kid kept walking with me, and I was like, I don't really care. <laughs> like, you can go on, I'm good by myself. And he would occasionally go off and do his other thing, but then he joined back up with me, and he was, uh, I wouldn't mind it too bad, but he didn't know anything about personal space, so he would get, like, way too close to me, or, like, really far away from me, and he couldn't walk in a straight line, and he was walking on the grass, which is paved all around there, so it kind of annoys me when people walk on the grass, and he would even occasionally run people off the sidewalk by just not moving over and that stuff. Like, it's just courtesy to, if you're walking side by side and there's someone else coming, to go single file until you get past them. And, uh, so, that was the entire time. I was like, I wish he would just go away. <laughs> the, uh, there was another person, and I know her pretty well. She's, like, grandma, my grandma's age. And, uh, I had walked around with her for a little bit, and we got together in a big group to do a group, uh, task. And after that, she was going to go ahead and leave, and I was paying attention to my phone, because that's where the game is played on. 
and I guess she was reaching out to touch me, and I saw her, and I reached out and just grabbed her hand. I was like, what am I doing? Like, it was the wrong hand to do a handshake. And I just kind of did, like, an awkward handshake. I was like, oh, my God, why did I? I should have just looked up or something like that. It was like I thought she was reaching out for a handshake, and I think she was just trying to get my attention. But it was awkward, and I thought about it for a good 30 minutes afterwards. Actually, oh, yeah, I tried to limit the... I was like, I don't have that many inside the introvert, but I'm trying to limit it so I can try to keep these within 30 minutes, which uh, I think it took me a little bit longer to start off on this video, but only one more. Um, so I seem, can't seem to get used to people knowing my name at work. Like, I'm such a quiet person that if someone knows my name and I haven't interacted with them, because I usually remember, I don't remember names, but I can remember faces and interactions very well. And it really freaks me out. And it's happened four times in the last like week and a half that someone has known my name and I've never interacted with them. Uh, one of them, I was walking into the cafeteria and someone came from the side right as I walked in. And I paused for a little bit, for a second, and then went around them. And uh, I said, excuse me. And she said, uh, oh, Jeremy, sorry about that. I was like, crap. And I looked at her later and I was like, I've never interacted with her. I have no clue who that is. And... Uh, Again, I was walking in one morning, and uh, uh, there was someone behind me, and I scanned my badge and held the door open for her, and she said, oh, thanks, Jeremy, good morning. I was like, who is this? And I mean, it makes sense because there's a lot of ways people could find out my name. Um, my cube, I've got my nameplate right next to a little board that I write uh, puns and jokes and stuff on um, twice a week. And lots of people, it's right on the corner that everyone walks by, so lots of people can see that. Um, every Friday I wear a team shirt that's got my name on the back of it. Uh, I play softball for the company, so that's got my name. And what's the other one? Oh, when they do a costume contest, usually they will um, take pictures and send it out with our names on it to the entire uh, company. And Which, I mean, I work with like... 700 plus people so I guess that's why it freaks me out when people know my name but I guess they're just they're people that are like that that really know people's names and retain that kind of information I'm not that kind of person but I still like it's happened to me a lot since working at this company I wonder if I can go over this log this is going to be close but I can't get used to it when someone knows my name I'm like who who are you but all right Yay, I made it over the log. That's going to be it. I must be under my 30 minute mark, so that's what I'm aiming for. And uh, I think I'll talk about something else in a later video. I was about to say it. Um, well, I guess if I've got time, watch. My camera will shut off right when I start talking about this. Um, I'm kind of considering splitting off the Inside the Introvert into a different podcast. And uh, if I did that, I'd have like the... I'd talk about movies I've watched recently and then have the movie review in one podcast and then I'd have the uh, other introduction like maybe to my life and then inside the introvert. I'd probably put the jokes and quotes on that second podcast. Um, I'm not going to do it until like December whenever I go to audio only because I'm not going to create 20 million videos. Uh, it's just too much work. But it seems like a really good idea and uh, I think they're two, I think they could be two standalone podcasts. Not that I really think anyone's going to listen to them, but I still have fun making them, so I'm going to keep doing them, and when I do audio only, it'll be much easier to do. Oh no, they're just spider web. So that's going to be it. Um, if you're listening to this, you can see my video on videos on YouTube. It's got all my episodes. Uh, if you want to listen to older episodes, you can go to Buzzsprout. And um, if you want to see nature pictures or just awesome pictures, I've got Flickr at Silver C underscore review. I also share them on Pinterest, and I've got a Twitter, and I try to put all my new videos on SoundCloud. So, that's all for me. Take care.